So, yeah, this section, we're going to look at what are known as uh, people counter sensors. Some other people know them as floor counter sensors. And these are particularly useful when you want to look at the number of people in a space. You're not necessarily worried about where they are in the space. You just want to look at how near to capacity, for instance. So in a building or on a floor or in a room. Uh, these sensors were originally developed for the for the retail sector um, and they would help uh, clients understand the movement of shoppers around stores um, and through checkouts etc but you know over the past I would say four to five years we're starting to see increased usage of these sensors outside of the uh, retail sector um, large uptake in usage within higher education where a client will want to potentially measure the uh, capacity or how many people are in a lecture theatre for instance or in a in a building or how many people are in my building at any point in time uh, the sensors can you know they would be positioned over an ingress or egress point uh, and give you uh, can give you real-time data for how many people are in the building, on a floor, or in a room at any point in time. Uh, these sensors, uh, slightly different to the open area sensors Alex just talked about, and again, different to the ones that uh, Travis talked about, these use uh, 3D stereo vision technology. So they're using uh, camera technology, um, but similar to you know to alex and xy sense privacy is of uh, you know paramount importance with these sensors and again like the xy sense sensor only metadata leaves the sensor so we have no no imagery leaving the sensor there are you know in this particular sensor we have up to four levels of privacy protection built in uh, to the sensor itself very intelligent sensors in as much as it, it it can count bi-directionally so it understands a person walking in and walking out of a space one of the other things that's been developed recently with this sensor and, and is, is starting to see an uptake is this q length and dwell time dwell time measuring capabilities again initially developed for the retail sector you know stores want to know what's happening and where people are going but what it's also finding usage is in is with some large uh, multinationals where, for instance, like canteens, you know, how long's the queue at the canteen? How long, you know, not how many people, but how long have people been in that queue uh, is another, you know, another area where these can be used. They also have a very useful feature, which is the, what we call the multi-sensor uh, feature, which is basically we can stitch the sensors together and we can up to, up to nine of these sensors can be stitched together at any point in time so that a body and again the anonymous on anonymization i'm trying to get it out is, is is the same as with the pir and with the area sensor so a person entering is only seen as a body but with the multi-sensor stitching approach that person can be tracked or that body can be tracked through all nine of the senses so you can start to kind of see the movement of people as well within a defined space uh again very similar to you know we can see we can do movement of people with the uh area sensor obviously we can't do movement of people with the pir sensor um but the, we are starting to see uh a, a lot more uses for this type of sensor uh, in you know in the corporate real estate place. So I imagine since this is ingress and egress, it's probably not uncommon for companies and workplaces to have kind of a mix of sensors. It sounds like ingress, egress, but then also maybe something else to once people are in there to understand where they're going. Is that is that safe to assume? Uh, Definitely, I, you know, I'm I'm a very strong believer in there isn't one sensor that fits all, and I think with the 
you know this new hybrid office of the future where we're going to have we're going to have desking we're going to have collaboration spaces we're going to have lots of different spaces and for me the thing at the moment is we don't know what we're going to have there's going to be lots of iterations of people are going to be trying let's try this see how it works let's try this see how it works and you know one of the real things you need is you need that data you know people who had sensors in the past I've got some historical data. How relevant that historical data is in today's world, I don't know, but at least you have a starting point. You know, we're starting, I, I, I always reference this, we're all starting with a blank canvas. Those who have historical data can at least put a base coat on. Those with no data have really got to start thinking about mixing the paint. And we've really, you know, and, you know, we're going to get, small phone booths do we really want to put an area sensor in a phone booth that's for single occupancy no we can put a pir sensor in there we're going to have collaboration and soft seating spaces can we use pirs there no we can't they don't then they don't work in that environment area sensors ideal for that environment but then we might have spaces where we just want to know how many people are in the space not necessarily what they're doing people counter sensors